Cirrus Migrate Cloud is a patented solution created to help customers move data from anywhere to anywhere. This includes within on-premises data centers, between data centers, on-premises to clouds, between clouds, and between storage tiers or availability zones or regions of clouds with the least impact on production operations. In many cases, the migration and final cutover can be performed with zero downtime. Cirrus Migrate Cloud is block storage array agnostic, giving customers a single tool for all their block data migration requirements. We'll use CMC to refer to Cirrus Migrate Cloud from this point on. This short video will demonstrate CMC performing local migration from one brand of Fiber Channel Array on-premises to another. Local migration means both the source and destination disks are accessible by the same host. For this migration, a Linux host and a Windows host are using Fiber Channel disks from this source storage configured with Multipath. The goal is to migrate to this new storage without any downtime throughout the deployment, migration, and final cutover process. The migration is managed using Cirrus Data Solutions CMC portal in the cloud. The first step is to get the two hosts to register and appear in a project in the CMC portal. Let's take a look at the CMC portal, start to deploy the CMC agents at the Linux host and the Windows host. Log into the CMC portal using your account. Here's a list of all the projects you created or were invited to by other project administrators. To create a new project, click the Create New Project button. Enter a project name. Enter a short description. Click Create Project. Click on the newly created project to open it. The project details and license information are listed here. On the left, are items related to this project such as host, migration sessions, integrations, and project settings. First, let's click on project settings. You can invite other users to help manage this project, or you can delete the project or leave the project if there's another administrator. Now, let's see how we can add the Linux and Windows hosts to the project. Click Hosts. There are no existing discovered hosts. Click here to get the one-line installation command. Let's start with the Windows host. Click Windows and copy the command. Note that the command contains a project ID, which allows this command to be used by all the hosts that are supposed to be migrated by this project to register with this project. This way, we end up with the entire list of all hosts for this project automatically. Here's the remote desktop console for the Windows host. Open up the PowerShell session window, paste the copied command, and run it. It takes about 30 seconds to a minute to do this. There is no user interaction. This can also be remotely executed using Windows management tools or other software deployment automation tools. While this is running, let's launch Disk Manager in Computer Manager. The disk to be migrated is Disk 1, which is formatted as Drive D. To simulate a live workload, let's start Iometer and begin some I.O. on this disk. Here, the disk is now active with I.O. Now the registration is complete, and we should have this host listed in our project back at the CMC portal. Let's close this for now. Here, the Windows host is automatically discovered. And here are all the details for the host, including the disks. Let's repeat this for the Linux host. Click on the red button to get the command. Click here to copy the Linux curl command. Go to the Linux SSH console, and at the Linux command prompt, paste the curl line and execute it. Again, it takes about 30 seconds to a minute to do this, and requires no user interaction. This can be remotely executed using enterprise management tools like Ansible or Terraform. While this is running, let's launch another Linux console to check out the disk volumes. For the demo, a sample PostgreSQL database for the patient visits is running. This is a multipath device, ending with the ID 41. If we run multipath-l, we can see that the multipath device ending in ID 41 is DM2, the source storage. Let's start a workload on the database by running a script to add records. 
Now records are being added continuously. Let's see the web GUI for this application. Note that we have a number of records so far, and it's continually increasing. So now, both the Windows and the Linux Fiber Channel hosts have active workloads. We want to now migrate them live and cut over to the new storage without any downtime. Let's see how the one-liner installation is doing. And it's done and has registered with the CMC project successfully. Let's migrate. At the host window, we now see both hosts. The first step is now complete. The next three steps are to auto allocate destination storage using the integration plugin for the new storage. Pair up the source and destination disks. And set up the migration sessions. And optionally, set up actions for snapshots. Let's start by creating the Windows host. We have all the detail about the host, including all the disks. Disk 1 is drive D, and that will be the one we migrate. Click here to start the migration process. Note that CMC supports both local and remote migration. Click Local Migration and Continue. Here is a list of disks that can be selected as source. Select Disk 1. For destination storage that has an integration or plugin, we can click Auto Allocate, which will automatically allocate a new disk at the destination storage. So let's do that. Here, we select the destination storage integration plugin and click here to automatically perform remediation for the host in order for it to see the new storage. This may include setting up multipath or MPIO support. Once all the remediation steps are completed, click here to allocate new destination disks. Now a new disk 2 is allocated. Click Continue. And is automatically paired with the source disk. Click Continue. Here we enter additional information about the migration session. A description, auto resync interval, and IQOS. IQOS is a powerful feature that tells CMC to automatically back off when the host application is using the disk heavily, but automatically go full throttle if the host is not too busy. This way, CMC always maximizes usage of the available bandwidth. The setting here indicates which level of impact CMC allows for continued migration if the host is very busy. The choices are minimal, moderate, aggressive, with each choice being increasingly more aggressive. Relentless means CMC will go full throttle without regard to host impact. This is a last resort setting when the migration deadline is near and the host owner accepts a higher level of impact. For this migration, let's use moderate. Optionally, CMC can define pre-snapshot, snapshot, and post-snapshot actions. Every time a periodic resync is complete, these actions are triggered, allowing for a fully consistent snapshot to be taken using the snapshot capability of the destination storage. This allows the destination disk to be tested by the real application or database prior to cutover. We're going to skip this for now. Now we can create the migration session. The migration has now started and is progressing toward 100% completion. While this is happening, let's set up the Linux migration session by repeating the exact same process we just used for Windows. Let's go back to the hosts list. Click here to open the Linux host. Click Migrate Host, Local Migration, Continue, select the source disk, which is DM2 because that's the one with the database mount point. Click Auto Allocate, select the integration, remediate the host. Remediation is done. Click Continue. Click Allocate Volume. And now the source is paired automatically with the destination disk, which is DM3. Again, enter the information for the session. 
use a five minute resync interval with moderate impact, we're going to skip the actions option for this migration. Click create session. And now the migration is proceeding. On the left, there's a data migration tab. This shows all the host migration sessions for this project. Monitor this screen or click on any of these sessions for details. When the status becomes tracking changes, the initial copy is complete and we can proceed to the next steps, which are see motion and finalize cutover. The window session is now ready. Let's trigger see motion. The first copy is complete and now it's waiting to perform the periodic resync every five minutes. You can see how much data has changed at the block level here. And you can visualize the dirty blocks by clicking here. Here the blue dots represent the change blocks that will be copied again. In this stage, the next step is to perform C-Motion where the workload I.O. can be swung over to the destination storage or revert C-Motion back to the source and then C-Motion back to the destination. This makes it possible to perform a test cutover using C-Motion, observe the performance and other capabilities of the new storage to confirm everything is working, and if additional adjustments need to be made offline, it's possible to swing the workload back to the source while the new storage is being reconfigured. So let's perform the C-Motion cutover. Now all the reads and writes to the live volume are being redirected to the new storage. The source disk is completely quiet. Now the track changes. This allows for reverting the C-Motion back to the source storage, so let's do that. And now the reads and writes are back to the source storage. So let's C-Motion forward. and we're ready to finalize the cutover. The action to finalize cutover is used to ensure that the source disk and destination disk are set up so that when there's a planned or unplanned reboot in the future, the destination disk will be the one mounted for production. So let's perform the final cutover starting with the Windows host. Click Session Actions and select Finalize Cutover. Now the cutover is complete. At this state, the volume is still accessible by redirection to the destination disk. The source and destination disks are configured so that upon the next reboot, whenever that is, the active volume will be the new destination disk. Therefore, it's not necessary to have downtime for this final cutover because the reboot can be deferred indefinitely to some time in the future. Now let's do the same for the Linux host. The session is at the tracking changes state, performing a resync every five minutes. The amount of change data is listed here. Let's trigger C-Motion. And finalize cutover. Now the Linux host has also completed cutover. The source and destination disks are configured so that any reboot will result in the destination being the active volume. The migration project is complete at this stage without any downtime. To demonstrate what would happen when the future unplanned or planned reboot takes place, let's actually do that. Opening up the disk management here, the active volume, drive D, is still disk 1, even though CMotion is redirecting the I.O. to disk 2, which is shown as offline here. So let's do a reboot right now. While it's rebooting, let's do the same thing for the Linux host.
Now let's see how Windows is doing. The system has rebooted. Open Computer Manager and Disk Manager. And we can see that Disk 1 is not an accessible volume, and Disk 2 is Drive D. Open up the Physical Properties, and you'll see this is the new storage. Now let's see how the Linux host is doing. Here, df capital T shows the volume is automatically mounted. It's a multipath device ending in 36. Let's check the identity of this multipath device. And we can see that the multipath device ending in 36 is the destination storage. This completes the demonstration of online migration using Cirrus Migrate Cloud end to end from deployment to migration to final cutover, all without downtime.